In the name of the crucified God, who gives us minds to think, and hearts to love, and hands to serve. Amen. 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 All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant. Lent gets underway fast. St. Mark's Gospel tells us that the Holy Spirit drives Jesus out into the wilderness for 40 days of struggle and temptation. The Holy Spirit doesn't ask or even gently coax Jesus out into the wilderness. Rather, after his baptism in the Jordan, the Spirit forcefully pushes Jesus out into the unknown desert places of the soul to be alone with God. And most of us don't spend much or any time alone in any kind of real wilderness. Some of you might bravely camp alone deep in some woods. Maybe some of you have taken a silent retreat before. The season of Lent is meant to be jarring for us. Ash Wednesday begins by pushing our comfortable patterns and our routine expectations. Of course, this year, we enter this holy season the way we ended it last year, in the middle of this pandemic. Last year saw us gripped with fear and uncertainty. This year, we approach with hope, hope that we will soon emerge from this viral wilderness. Whatever our state at this stage of the pandemic, the church once again calls us into the observance of a holy land self-examination and repentance by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. This is a big list. It's a lot to think about. These 40 days are supposed to be different and even sort of challenging for us. Serious self-examination takes courage. If we were in our parish churches, gathered as we usually are, we would notice the changes in the worship space that point to that difference. We usually strip things down. We empty out and create sparer worship spaces. Sometimes simple wooden crosses take the place of brass and silver ones. Our communion sets are different. When I was the dean of the cathedral in Louisville, we had a Lenten cross that was made by the African-American sculptor Ed Hamilton. It was a crude and haunting cross. It had pieces of sharp wire sticking out from it and stained cloth on the vertical beam. It provided for some ominous reflection. This Lent, being you're not in your churches, you might find some small wooden cross, some icon, maybe print out some image, some spare image in your prayer space that might draw your attention in your times of prayer and meditation. In this holy season, our focus is on the cross. During Lent, we are to pray and to work to place ourselves in the shadow of the cross of Christ. What does it mean to me? What is it calling me into? What cruciform shadow does it cast on the nature of my discipleship? What is my understanding? What might I be avoiding or hiding from? You know, there are lots of crosses visible in the culture if you really pay attention. There's a lot of cross jewelry. There you see crosses of all kinds on clothing. And more and more you see a lot of cross tattoos even. Now you can be pretty certain that many of these people do not go to church regularly or worship or pray in the shadow of the cross, thinking about their mortality, that from dust they came to dust they will return. So what can these crosses possibly mean for them? There's so many. Is it just fashion? Is it a like a, you know, lucky rabbit's foot or something? Is it is an ornate cross necklace a reminder of one's discipleship? Or is it just an accessory? What are all these crosses that we see everywhere? What are they symbolic of? What do they mean to us? A plain, rude, wooden cross is a kind of antidote to all of our cultural static that bombards us every day. 
Lent is a time of stripping things down. We need to make things sparer so that we can do some meaningful soul work. We need to listen for God. This means that we need to be quiet. This is what the wilderness is for. The wilderness of the cross requires patience and attention because it is the very door to our salvation, a door that opens on to resurrection. In Martin Scorsese's film, The Last Temptation of Christ, there's a striking scene when Jesus is being tempted out there in the wilderness. He walks way out into the desert. He finds this field full of rocks, and he prepares to sit down in that field. He finds a place, and he takes one large rock, and he begins tracing a large circle around himself, sort of bent over, tracing this circle. And as he is etching this circle, he says out loud to God, I'm not going to leave this circle until you speak to me. Whatever path you want, I will take. And then Scorsese has this great overhead shot as Jesus sits right in the center of this perfect circle to pray, to wait. Lent is an invitation for us to venture out of the wilderness and set our souls before God. Will you find ways to duck and dodge the shadow of the cross for 40 days? Or will you draw some kind of circle around yourself so that you can watch with Christ and wait for what path the Holy Spirit might want to open for you? It's your journey. Only you and God know what you need or really no longer need. If you consider the deprivations and isolating nature of this pandemic to be a wilderness, then you might want to focus on ways to reframe your thinking. Maybe in this particular season of Lent, your moments of silence and prayer might focus more on the many blessings that you do have and less on the things that have been taken away or lost. Perhaps you might undertake an inventory of your gratitude to find more richness in this stripped-down time. Jesus desires for us to journey down with him to Jerusalem. His life-giving cross is the door of our faith and our hope. This Lent, may you discover what grace and blessing awaits you out there in the wilderness. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm.